I'm very fortunate to have a dedicated sewing room. It's one of my favorite rooms in the house, so I'd like to show it to you. I love having things organized and functional. As I show you around the room, I'll highlight the ways I try to make the space work. It's my hope you'll see an idea you can use, or even better, have an idea you can share in the comments below. Sewing is an activity that generates lots of stuff. It's important to have an efficient and practical way to store sewing supplies. A lot of my supplies are stored in this art bin unit. Most of the bins contain thread sorted by color. When I need to choose thread, I slide out the bin and pick my color. I like using this unit because it holds other necessities too. I keep things in here that I don't need every time I sit down to sew, but they need to be handy when I do need them. I have a bin for interfacing, a bin for large serger cones, another bin for quilting projects if I happen to be working on one, and finally a bin for my works in progress. The sewing room has adequate, if not extensive, closet space. There are sliding doors that provide a full-length mirror. Inside are two metal shelf units. They're on wheels so I can slide them around the closet if I have to reach the stuff that is way in the back. I keep a very small fabric stash. Everything fits on two shelves, and to be honest, some of these fabrics are leftovers from past projects. I do have a large stash of Berta magazines, though. Past issues are stored in file boxes and arranged by month and year. These archived files don't contain the whole magazines just the pattern sheets and the instructions. I keep my collection of DVDs in this closet. And I have quite a large collection of past issues of Threads magazine. I've been a subscriber for many years and I just can't bear to get rid of the magazines. And speaking of things I can't bear to get rid of, I hold on to the old sewing books I rarely use. Some of these books were published back in the 80s, but I consider them classics, and I don't think I could ever get rid of them. In spite of the old books, old magazines, and DVDs, I've managed to keep some hanging space in the closet. This is where I hang works in progress when they are too far along to stay in the art bin unit. I think there is a federal law that says you must have something from Ikea in your sewing room. This Billy bookcase from Ikea works very well and should keep me out of federal prison. The two bottom shelves hold miscellaneous supplies and patterns. Don't be fooled by the labeled boxes. They actually are the sewer's equivalent of a junk drawer. The box labeled soft supplies contains items that will become part of the garment, things like zippers and tapes. The box labeled hard supplies holds tools necessary for garment construction. The embellishments box contains mostly craft supplies. The miscellaneous box contains anything that didn't quite fit into the other boxes. Even with this very loose organization, I can usually find what I'm looking for. Every sewing room needs a button jar. I have two, one for dark buttons and one for light. 
The books I'm likely to reference are in this bookcase instead of the shelves in the closet. My Birder magazines are stored in magazine files that hold six issues each so I can easily find the issue I want. Patterns are kept in a box at the bottom of the bookcase and are sorted by garment type. Within each garment section, patterns are sorted by company and then numerically. For more details about my pattern storage system, see my video, Organizing Berta Magazine Patterns. A link is in the description below. Layout, cutting, and marking are fundamental parts of the sewing process and they deserve a comfortable workspace. The first thing you see when you enter the sewing room is my cutting table. It's my favorite thing in the sewing room because I designed and built it myself. For details, see my video, The World's Best Cutting Table. The link is in the description below. The tools I need for layout, cutting, and marking are within reach of the cutting table, either on a pegboard or in the cutlery tray. Scissors, rotary cutters, and rulers hang on the pegboard, while other essentials are in the cutlery tray. I keep pattern weights, tape, and marking pens and pencils at this end of the cutting table. My sewing machine and serger are in the sewing corner. I've had the machines for quite a while and I would really love to have new machines and a new cabinet, but I can't justify the expense right now. Besides, I love my machines. Owning a Bernina was always a goal, and I finally got the Aurora 430 in 2007. I got my Baby Lock Evolve two years later. After 13 years, I still love these machines, even though machines now do so much more. I keep a bulletin board in the sewing corner to hold instruction sheets and reminders. The sewing machine cabinet is an integral part of the sewing corner. Notions and tools needed while sewing and serging are kept in the cabinet drawers. I made these little sewing machine needle holders out of spice containers by sticking labels on the tops. Sewing machine and serger attachments and feet are close by in the cabinet. The sewing machine cabinet is very functional and has lots of room to store stuff. I have a second pegboard in the sewing corner to hold the tools I need while I'm at the machines. Pressing seams as you sew them is the way to get a good looking finished garment. I put just as much thought in the pressing area as in the rest of the sewing room. The pressing area is immediately adjacent to the sewing corner. Moving back and forth between the two areas takes only two or three steps. The supplies I need while pressing are stored on shelves above the ironing board. Pressing cloth, pressing ham and holder, and seam roll are kept in a decorative box. Combination seam clapper and point presser sleeve board, 
spray bottles, and water are all within an arm's reach. My sewing room is more than just my sewing room though. I try to surround myself with things that make me happy while I'm in there. I like to have something going on in the background while I sew. I've got music, audiobooks, and podcasts downloaded on my iPod. Or if I'm feeling old school, I listen to broadcast radio. It makes me happy to have fun things to look at in my sewing room. These dolls, photographs, and other knickknacks make me feel good when I see them. Often, I like to watch TV while I sew, so I plugged a Roku stick in the sewing room TV. In addition to regular broadcast programming, I can watch old movies or YouTube videos. I also have a DVD player attached so I can watch my sewing DVDs and learn something while I'm sewing. And then there's my board of directors. Bert, two minions, and my current favorite musician, Ed Sheeran. While researching this video, I watched many sewing room tours on YouTube. I couldn't help but notice lots of sewers were using IKEA's pegboard system to organize supplies. So I decided to update my pegboards. The pegboard and accessories eliminated the need for the cutlery tray at the end of the cutting table and gave me just a little more working room. I also replaced the pegboard in the sewing corner and I might eventually replace the bulletin board behind the sewing machine. It's great to have an entire room as my dedicated sewing space. My sewing room reflects my personality as much as any other room in the house. My goal was to create a space where I could spend time doing something I enjoy in an environment I enjoy.